Uh, welcome, welcome back to the grade nines. Uh, today we will be looking at ratio and rates. Well, uh, let's continue in this. Uh, the first thing that we will do in question 1.1.1 we have uh, um, 6 ratio 5 is equals to 2x the ratio of 15 and the question they ask is to find the value of x let me just zoom in a little bit so what we will do in here we know that this is the same as 6 divided by 5 and this is the same as 2x divided by 50 and then we can try and cross multiply 6 times 15 equals 2x times 5 All right uh, let's continue in this so uh, we have uh, 6 by 15 let me just uh, do it very fast uh, Let me just say 6 by 15 and we will find a value of 90 so we have 90 equals 2 times 5 is 10 then you write your x or you can say 2x times 5 is 10x and you can divide both sides by 10 because you want to get rid of the coefficient of x so that you can only be left with uh, the variable x and then when we are here zero can take in zero how many ones can we pull out of nine nine of them so this becomes the value of x and we can try and check if this is true six is to five equals 2x is to 15 where we see x we will plug in the value that we have found 6 is to 5 it's equals to 2 into 9 is to 15 6 uh, is to 5 this is 18 is to 15 now we can try and check here when we have 18 is to 15 we can find a value that goes in here without leaving any remainder let's divide by 3 so that would give you how many threes can we pull out of 18 3 6 9 12 15 18 6 of them and how many threes can we pull out of 15 3 6 9 12 15 5 so the left hand side is equal to the right hand side so the value of 9 is correct something just worthy of noting right and uh, we can go to 1.1.2 we have a right the ratio 5 uh, 3 divided by 7 it's a mixed number 9 5 over 7 in uh, the simplest form so we need to simplify this <laughs> now there are several ways in which we can do this i'm going to use the grade 6 the grade 5 method of mathematics so that you can see what is happening here this can also be written as 5 plus 3 over 7 this is very very important this is the same as 5 plus 3 over 7 so meaning this is the same as 9 plus 5 over 7 so any whole number has a denominator of one always recall that right and then if that is so what is it that we can do here i have a denominator of seven and a denominator of one i want to make this denominator also a seven therefore i can multiply both numerator and the denominator by seven over seven the same as multiplying by one what do I mean by that? You can have your 5 over 1 and 7 over 7 plus 3 over 7. So this one we're not going to multiply by 7 over 7 because remember it is this denominator that we want to make 7. 
right is 2 so you have 9 over 1 here we also want to make the denominator to be 7 so we're going to do this very good so we will have 5 times 7 uh, let's check 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 so 5 times 7 is 35 1 times 7 is 7 very good 3 over 7 can you see that we have succeeded in making this denominator 7 but it also changes your numerator something worthy of noting 9 times 7 uh, don't have to think a lot on that calculators are provided for us to do these things uh, 9 times 7, uh, you will get 63. So we find uh, 63, 1 times 7 is 7, plus 5 over 7. Worthy of noting. Now that the denominators are the same, you just write your denominator, make the division line. You just say 35 plus 3, which will give you 38. Now that the denominators are the same, you just say 6 plus 3, that would give you 68. So when you simplify this, they boils down to 38 over 7 and 68 over 7. Now remember they said simplify the ratio. You are not going to multiply both sides in here by 7. Because when you simplify this, it boils down to a, 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 a fraction. This is very very important. When you simplify this, it can never be a whole number. It has to be a fraction. And let's try and see if this is true. For those who are using a Casio FX991 ES, they know that there's a button that allows for a mixed number. And when you insert there 5 and 3 divided by 7, it will give you an answer of 38 over 7. And 9 over 7 will also give you 68 over 7. So please, just leave it in this way. Just leave it there. Right. Let's go to 1.1.3. They say to us now, uh, Mohau owns a farmhouse. His farmhouse contains cows and buffaloes. Uh, the total number of animals in his farmhouse is 42. Find the number of cows and the number of buffaloes if the ratio of cows to the buffalo is 5 uh, is to 9. So the ratio is provided 5 is to 9. Now let us reread this once again. Mohau owns uh, in a farmhouse. Uh, his farmhouse contains cows and buffaloes. Very important that you note which one they started with. So they start first by saying cows and buffaloes. So this would be cow and this will be buffalo. The total number of animals in his farmhouse is 42. So the sum of cows and the buffaloes is 42. So we have the total of 42. Right. Find the number of cows and the number of buffaloes if the ratio of cows to the buffalo is 5 is to 9. Right. So the first thing that we do for this, you are going to add your ratios. So the solution, you will start first by adding those two numbers. And that should give you 14. And then... What is it that we want? We want the number of cows and the number of buffaloes. So you will take first the number that is provided as a ratio of cow, which is 5. You will say 5. You will divide by the total. When you added those two ratios. And then you will multiply by the total number of animals in the farm. And this should give you the number of cows. Whereas for the number of buffaloes, you would say 9 over 14 times 42. And one thing also worthy of noting, when you look at the ratios in here, you have 5 and 9 for buffaloes. So because this number is bigger than that number, we expect to get more buffaloes and less cows. Something that is worthy of noting. 
so let me try to see what the answers would be so i would just come here i would just say 5 divided by 14 and i would multiply that by 42 and you should always get a whole number so we get 15 cows and let's see the number of buffaloes now for the number of buffaloes the other way in which you can do this is just to say 42 minus 15 that would be another way of finding an answer because that sum should give you a value of 42 so you would get uh, 27 so and uh, 27 buffaloes very very important that we we see that right uh that was a pretty easy question to deal with uh something which doesn't require much effort and doesn't really drain your mind at all right that was 1.2.1 let's see 1.2.2 .2. right what is it that they are saying right they say uh oh sorry that was 1.1.3 sorry so this was 1.1.3 let's go to 1.2.1 right uh what is it that they want they say to us in there um a car travels 120 kilometers in five hours at this rate what distance does it cover in nine hours right so let me just write down the data a car travels uh, 120 kilometers in five hours so we have the distance which is 120 km kilometers we have time which is five hours and they want to know uh, what distance does it cover in nine hours so if t equals nine hours uh, find distance okay that is fine and remember what they say today a car travels 120 kilometers in five hours five hours at this rate what distance does it cover in nine hours now remember what rate is rate is the ratio of two different quantities in this case uh, distance and time and rate can also be defined as the quotient of two different quantities so I'm going to deal with this in uh, a division and also ratio way of looking into this so there will be two ways of doing this the first one i'm going to do this using a ratio so i know for 120 kilometers the time as a ratio is five hours right i hope we are fine in this All right uh and then i am provided with time which is nine hours they want to find the distance so i don't have the distance but the time is nine hours so you would just cross multiply here so you would say this with this and this with that so you will have 120 times 9 equals 5x and you would divide both sides by 5 and your x would be what value let us check this so we will have um 120 multiplied by 9 divided by 5 and we find a value of 260 remember what we wanted distance kilometers let us try to check if this is making sense because that's one most important thing to be uh, aware of if the distance is 120 the time is a five 
now we are increasing the distance to 216 obviously the time will also increase so for uh, long hours we expect more distance to be covered less hours less distance that needs to be traveled something that is worthy of note so this is one way of looking into this looking at rate as a ratio of two different quantities or the second way as a quotient of two different quantities so you have uh, you know that okay uh, you want a distance so we, we can say in this case uh, distance over time equals distance over time as now a quotient of two different quantities now i know the distance which is given to me the distance is 120 so i can have 120 kilometers which is covered in five hours i'm looking for distance which is covered in nine hours very important i can cross multiply 120 kilometers times nine hours equals distance times five hours i'm looking for distance five hours five hours hours and hours will go once into each other and then you have 120 times nine divided by five sorry kilometers here so is this is this please look is this not the same as that is it not the same as this it is exactly the same thing so here we have treated the rate as a ratio and here we have treated the rate uh, as a quotient of two different quantities but it should give you the very same answer and if you find this very useful, making a lot of sense, please do not forget to share, like, and subscribe. Right, um, we are done with 1.2.1. Uh, Let's look at 1.2.2. So what is it that they want? An aeroplane flies at a speed of 500 kilometers per hour. What distance will it cover in 12 hours? What is the time taken by it to cover a distance of 1,200 kilometers? Now, it seems like there are two questions that are being asked here. The first one, an aeroplane flies at a speed of 500 kilometers per hour. What distance will it cover in 12 hours? The first one. The second one, what is the time taken by it to cover a distance of 1,200 kilometers? Right, so let's write down the data. An aeroplane flies at a speed of 500. So speed, sorry, speed is uh, 500 kilometers per hour. What distance will it cover in 12 hours? So we want distance when time is 12 hours. Let's deal first with this one. So I know the triangle of speed distance and time relationship uh, and i know that distance equals speed times time therefore uh, speed equals distance over time so this is the triangle that relates the relationship between speed distance and time so we are looking for distance so distance there it is you cover here is equal to speed multiplied by time right and then from here let's write down the speed that's 500 kilometers per hour you multiply that by 12 hours and please be careful here you have pair as a line of division so you have this as the denominator and this as the numerator they will go once into each other you are left with 500 kilometers times 12 what is 500 times 12? I my game and the basic right. Let us look into this. 500 multiplied by 12, and you would get 6,000. So this is 6,000 kilometers. So meaning 
a driver that drives at the speed of 500 kilometers for every hour and lasts for 12 hours doing so he will cover a distance of 6,000 kilometers something worthy of note now let us propel the problem and see what else is needed right and then secondly they say what is the time taken so we are looking for time uh, what is the time taken by it to cover a distance of 1200 so we have 1200 kilometers so they say what is the time taken by it to cover uh, a distance of this so many using the very same speed this is very very important so remember what they said an aeroplane fi flies at a speed of 500 kilometers per hour what distance will it cover in 12 hours we have done that what is the time taken by it to cover a distance of 1200 so the speed is the same uh, it remains the same speed equals distance over time so because we are looking for time therefore time equals distance divided by speed let us look into that time equals let's look distance divided by speed so time equals distance divided by speed are we given distance yes 1200 kilometers um what is the speed the speed is the same that's 500 kilometers per hour so you have this as the numerator and the denominator it will go once and then your time will be 1200 divided by 500 hours two zeros will take down two zeros and you will have 12 divided by five hours which is the same as how many fives can you pull out of 12 5 10 which is two hours and how much is left uh three uh two hours and uh, 30 minutes let's just verify this uh let's just see 12 divided by 5 which is 2.4 oh this is 2.4 so we have 2.4 hours something worthy of noting so we have the time it will take 2 hour and 40 minutes that is exactly what it means 2 hours and 40 minutes right to do what to cover a distance of 1200 kilometers if the speed remains constant at 500 kilometers per hour right uh, that is fine that is very very fine and then uh, I'm not going to do number 1.3.1 that will be for you to do so meaning I'm going to leave things right no 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 let me not do that let me try to continue with this now in 1.3 we have the following uh, the time taken by a car to cover different distances is shown in the table below so I'm going to try and draw the table right uh, here is the table and uh, we have uh, 120 we have 300 and we have 480 and uh, we have uh, 2 5 and 8 so this is the distance in kilometers and this is time in hours right 1.3.1 is this an example of a direct or inverse proportion now this is very important now in a direct proportional relationship as one quantity increases another one increases let us see this if the distance is 120 we require less hours two if we increase the distance to 300 more hours are needed if we increase the distance more hours are needed 
so meaning because the distance increases with an increase in time therefore this is what we call a direct proportional relationship so this is direct proportion or proportional relationship 1.3.2 <clears throat> Calculate how long it will take for the car to cover a distance of 420 kilometers. How long? So time is unknown. The distance is provided as 420 kilometers. Okay, that is fine. Now, I want you to see something here. Uh, we know the formula, the triangle, that is very, very important. That distance, speed times time remember uh, that is uh, what we used in there so what we need to find first in order to find time we need to find the speed because look what is happening if you don't find first the speed which will be constant you're going to have some problems because you have uh, speed as the unknown and time also as the unknown you are only given the distance so you need to find the speed and you will find that the speed is the same but let us check whether this is true or whether this is not i'm going to calculate for the first one and the second one just to check if the speed is the same and speed equals remember you close speed is equals to distance divided by time which is the distance that would be 120 kilometers time is two hours so what is 120 divided by two that is 60 kilometers you have the division line you have hours so this is 60 kilometers per hour now let us calculate for this one and see whether the values will be the same speed equals distance over time distance is 480 kilometers the time is eight hours so what is 480 divided by eight so we have uh, 480 divided by eight which is 60 also very good so the speed has to remain constant which is 60 kilometers Per hour. So even for 420, the speed must remain the same. So we can therefore come here and say uh, time is equals to distance divided by speed. Sorry. And we can say the distance is provided 420 kilometers. What is the speed is the same 60 kilometers per hour. Very good. So here 0 and 0 will go 42 kilometers. Kilometer will take kilometer. Uh, you are left with, sorry, hour here. So you have 42 divided by 6 hours. And what is that value? The value of 42 divided by 6. And that should give you seven hours. So uh, if the distance is 420 kilometers and the speed remains constant at 60 kilometers per hour, the time required will be seven hours. And let us check. Yes, this is true. Because look, this is 420. Therefore, the hours are less. That one was 480. Therefore, the hours are more. Something worthy of noting. Right, uh, we are almost done, the grade nines. Let us just go to question 1.4. Now, in 1.4, guys, we have the following. Uh, 12 kilogram of rice cost uh, 240. Find the cost of 7 kilograms of rice. So, we are told that 12 kilogram cost 240. They want to know how much it will cost for 7 kilograms. So 7 kilograms equals X. You can do this in terms of a ratio or a quotient. The choice is yours. 
so we will have 12 x equals 7 times 2 for t divide by 12 your x will be this and you just insert this on a calculator and you find an answer let me just see what that answer would be 7 times 2 for t divided by 12 140 so if you are given 7 kilograms of rice it will cost 140 is this making sense of course the more kilograms you have the more amount you will pay the less you have the lesser the amount right uh, let's go to 1.4.2 uh, we have uh, the following uh, 21 men can paint a room in seven hours so 21 men takes seven hours right how long will it take for 12 men to paint the same room so 12 men are equals to x these are ratio uh, problems cross multiply 21 x equals 12 times 7 21 21 let's see what the value of x would be so uh, we will see whether the answer makes sense or whether it doesn't so 12 times 7 divided by 21 and we get a value of 4 4 what remember hours hours let's see if this is making sense as there are um if you have 21 men they take seven hours to paint a house a room 21 men if you have 12 men are we expecting lesser hours or more hours Let's look into this. 21 men can paint a room in 7 hours. 21. Right. How long will it take for 12 men to paint the same room? Let, let us look into this. It takes 20, If there are 21 men, they take 7 hours to paint a room. If you have 12 now, there are fewer individuals how long will they take four hours is this making sense no it is not because if 21 men can take seven hours and you shorten the number of people obviously you must increase the time taken for uh, that to be done so let us look into this what is really happening here now look at something here uh, you have uh, 21 men uh the ratio of main to the number of hours is seven hours right now you shorten the number of main and you make it 12 main and obviously the number of hours must increase because you now have a shortage of people and if you try to cross multiply here you end up saying uh, 12 times 7 divided by 21 it gives you 4 there's a problem with that now how do we do that that is the question that we need to ask ourselves now let us look into this so what i can say is uh let us look into um how do we do this i want to look at the simplicity of approach uh let's do the following uh, i think uh, 
let us look at this in in this way uh, let's do the following let's say um let's say 21 times 12 divided by 7 let's look into this let's say um 21 times 12 divided by 7 and it gives us 36 36 hours is this making a lot of sense also because let's see uh the difference in these numbers ne? let's try to look into this so 21 minus 12 2 minus 1 is 1 in fact 21 minus 12 so what we can do here is to say 1 cannot subtract 2 we're going to borrow 1 this is 11 this becomes 1 11 minus 2 is 9 and 1 minus 1 is 0. So the difference is 9 hours. That is the difference. Sorry, man. Uh, 9 May. So 9 men are running short here. Right. If 9 men are running short here in order to make 21, so how do we do that? How do we do that? So if 21 men takes seven hours so let me divide this seven hours by this and see what is happening so if i say 21 divided by 7 7 14 21 it will give me three hours right if i get three hours so each individual takes three hours no sorry seven main seven main uh paint for they share uh three 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 this is the 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 hours that are given so you have how many uh seven hours three of them you have uh seven hours three of them so meaning you have a group of seven seven and seven and this group takes three hours and sorry what am i doing here so you have a uh, three uh seven so meaning these are the three seven 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 main gives you a total of 21 and how many hours do you have you have seven hours and then you can just say seven divided by three and seven divided by three will give you um 2.33 so let's just say uh this would give you 2.33 hours so these ones seven of these will take 2.33 2.33 hours 2.33 hours and that would give you a total of uh seven hours now that you have uh 12 main you want to know how long they will take now right uh and the difference is nine main now remember the difference is nine the difference is nine main so meaning um let me check this 